Hey, this is Three Man Doctrine with me, Captain Jerry Garner. Mission Command is the Army's approach to command and control that empowers subordinate decision making and decentralized execution appropriate to the situation. In the words of General George S. Patton Jr., never tell people how to do things, tell them what to do, and they will surprise you with their ingenuity. I think he knew what he was talking about. The seven principles of Mission Command are competence, mutual trust, shared understanding, commander's intent, mission orders, discipline initiative, and risk acceptance. First one, competence. Competence isn't just about being the smartest guy in the room or knowing the right answers on the test. It's about the proper application of knowledge in order to solve problems. The Army's ability to operate effectively by using mission command principles relates directly to the competence of its soldiers. The Army believes competence is acquired through training, education, assignment experience, and professional development. Of course, this will be on the test because assessment is the main tool the commander uses to determine whether the unit is combat ready. Mutual trust. It's a two-way street. Mutual trust is shared confidence between commanders, subordinates, and partners. Soldiers expect their leaders to practice what they preach. Leaders count on soldiers to come through during crunch time. This way, both parties know the other will always be there to catch them. Shared understanding. Did you get the memo? Shared understanding of the situation forms the basis for unity of effort and subordinates initiative. Collaboration requires dialogue. It can be blunt and not everybody gets everything their way. And at the end of it, everyone knows the plan and their role in it. Commander's intent. It should therefore be worded by the commander himself. That's Field Marshal William Joseph Slim, and I did you a favor by leaving out the British accent. All right, you might be thinking, now what? The simple answer is to do what your boss would do if he was here with you. The commander's intent is a clear and concise expression of the purpose of the operation and the desired military end state. A good commander gives you a clear picture of what mission accomplishment looks like. It's short, sweet, to the point, and not more than a paragraph. Mission orders. What the heck is that? Mission orders are directives that emphasize to subordinates the results to be obtained, not how they are to achieve them. I guess General Patton knew what he was talking about. It's not a product, it's a technique. Who, what, when, where, and why should be answered at the end of planning. Mission orders consist of the mission, task organization, commander's intent, and concept of operations, tasks to subordinate units, and minimum essential coordinating instructions. Charlie Mike isn't referring to your cousin with two first names. Discipline initiative refers to the duty individual subordinates have to exercise initiative within the constraints of the commander's intent to achieve the desired end state. Soldiers and leaders with discipline initiative know when to follow the plan until the plan is not suitable to their situation. Knowing the commander's intent enables them flexibility to meet new threats or seize opportunities. They then report the situation at the first opportunity while continuing the mission shoot, communicate, and move on out. Given the same amount of intelligence, timidity will do a thousand times more damage in war than audacity. Carl von Clausewitz. Risk acceptance. Mission command requires that commanders and subordinates manage accepted risk, exercise initiative, and act decisively, even when the outcome is uncertain. Analysis is important in planning for contingencies. Accepting prudent risk is not gambling is preparing your team as best you can with the tools available. After that, to paraphrase Henry VIII, it's all in the execution.